Hey guys, it's Steph here. So I want to get on here and give you a little update with my ranunculus. I'm in my greenhouse again. I'm going to have a lot of videos in here the next couple months, but about two weeks ago I planted them. I had pre-soaked them and now they're starting to sprout. So I wanted to tell you my game plan going forward with these corms so that I can protect them from freezing so they don't get too cold, but try to get blooms as early as I possibly can. It's been about two weeks. I have actually been storing them in my garage in this moistened soil. I actually didn't really have to water it after the first time. They haven't been wet, but it was pretty cold in there. So I have two other trays that I put in a basement storage just to see if I can get those ones to sprout a little bit more quickly. And because it's about 50 degrees in my basement storage and in my garage, it's only been about 42 degrees and it's gonna get really cold next week. So I'm worried about them freezing in my garage, but so right here, they're just barely starting to sprout right here. And then you can see the dirt. Let's see if I can show you. So you can see those little sprouts all starting to come up. So a funny story about these corns is after I had soaked them, I wasn't ready to put them in the soil in these flat trays yet. So I actually put them in my fridge for a few days hoping they wouldn't dry out and still sprout. And luckily they're just fine. I wouldn't recommend that. I wish I had done it right after I had soaked them, but you know, life got busy. I had so many other things going on and it just was one of those things I couldn't get to. Okay, so since I live in a zone 6B climate, typically with ranunculus zone seven and below, you wanna be a little bit more careful with them, especially with the temperatures. They don't wanna get below 28 degrees outside. If they go through that freeze thaw cycle, they're gonna rot and that would just be such a shame. If you're in a zone eight or nine, lucky you guys, you can just plant them out in fall. You don't have to worry about any of this. Enjoy beautiful blooms in spring. So since they don't like those lower temperatures, I have two different methods I'm going to do this year. I wanna experiment and see if one produces blooms a little bit earlier than the other one. So with this tray right here, I'm actually just gonna pot them up in four inch containers. I'm gonna let them grow in my greenhouse until about the end of February or beginning of March. And then I'm gonna put them out in the ground under my low tunnel, hoop house, whatever you wanna call it. And then my second batch that I'm still kind of waiting to sprout, I'm disappointed with these ranunculus corms that I bought in my other trays because they're so small and measly. Really didn't feel like I got my money's worth with them. I don't know how they come that small. Since these other ones are so small. I didn't pay a lot of money. I got them on sale, so I guess that's probably, you get what you pay for, right? I'm actually gonna put them in my garden box in about 10 or 12 days after these really cold temperatures pass. I'm gonna get them out really early. I have some winter cloth fabric. It's called Enslay. I have some piping. I'm gonna set up that low tunnel out in my garden box. Um, in about two weeks, I'm gonna maybe do it this weekend, but the temperatures are not allowing me. And then once I get that set up, I'm actually gonna fill up some gallons of water in from my milk jugs. We drink about 30 milk gallons a month with my five kids, so I have plenty of those. I don't have to worry about it. And then at night, I will actually take those milk jugs with that warmer water and put them under the low tunnel. So this winter cloth fabric, I hope I'm not losing you guys. I know it's a lot of information. This is very experimental. I did a lot of research and I kind of was debating on what I should do, but this is what I came up with. It's much heavier duty than some of your Ag 30, which I have for spring and it's just gonna keep it a little bit warmer. So at night when it's not really producing a lot of heat because there's no sunlight, those milk jugs should keep them warmer at night. And it's really not gonna be hard. I'm just gonna put four of them on each corner and make sure that those ranunculus corms don't freeze. I would love to see if I could get corms to survive in the soil all winter long, even when it's really cold. This insulate is a little bit thicker, so it doesn't have as much light transmission. So it's really only gonna be out there for a couple months. And then when it starts to warm up a little bit, I'll go ahead and replace the cloth with some of the Ag 30, which keeps it a little bit warmer, but the light transmission is gonna be much better. And those ranunculus corms are really gonna want a lot of that sunlight. Okay, so I think that is the game plan for my ranunculus. I'll keep you updated. And then I'm just gonna get these ones potted right now. And at the end of this video, I'm just gonna show you how tiny these lysianthus seeds are. So I'm wanting to document each process. I thought it might be helpful for some of you who are new to this or trying it for the first time, because help you go along with me, we can do it together. But I also wanna recap them into another video at the end if I have beautiful flowers to show you the entire process and condense it into one video. So it's a little bit more easy to follow along, but. Anyways, here we go.
right now I'm just gonna go ahead and sorry I've got so much hair on the shirt I need a lint roller I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these into my trays and I'm gonna leave them in here for I guess that's January February February March for another month and a half to two months and then I'll put them out in the ground and then those other ones that are chilling in my basement storage room I'm gonna let them sprout for another two weeks I think they'll be okay and then after the two and a half weeks two to two and a half weeks i'll go ahead and stick them in my garden boxes by then i think the temperatures will rise a little bit pretty sure i'm losing most of my soil out of this tray it's nice and moist you do not want soggy soggy corms I potted up around 30 of them so I just potted them in about I forgot to mention three to four inch containers about two inches deep so that was more than I thought I was gonna get in these indoor ones so 30 is a good number and you do have a greenhouse this is the last thing I wanted to add about the ranunculus is I'm just gonna leave them in here and I'm not gonna have them on heated mats I'm gonna try and keep them around 60 degrees so it's just slightly heated in here the same as the temperatures that my stock are at right now. If it does get a lot warmer in here, especially when the sun comes out around 75 degrees, I'll open this door. That typically keeps it at about 60 degrees in here. But if I feel like I can't keep it at 60, I do have a vent here I can turn on. Or I'll just stick them outside if it's like 35 degrees. That'll be fine too. But I do want to get that nice bright sunlight going on them so they can start forming some leaves and really start growing. Just wanted to add so no matter what zone you live in you can just space all of your plantings according to the temperatures if you can get them outside above the 28 degrees plant them when you feel like it if that is not the case if you're in a really cold zone zone three go ahead and start them in a greenhouse or a heated hoop house however you can but the temperatures are really what's important they really start to flower when it's about 40 degrees at night and then they kind of fizzle off if it gets a little bit hot they really love the 40 degrees at night and the 70 degrees during the day so i just wanted to add that and i'm actually gonna save my corms i didn't do that last year and i just am trying to save more and more money each year just because everything seems to get more expensive and i'm valuing my plants a little bit more so you kind of treat them like tulips your spring bulbs once they start to fizzle off with their blooming, then just let those leaves go yellow and then you can lift them up out of the ground, store them in a cool place, about 50 degrees, let them dry out and you can hold them up for a long time. So I'm actually gonna just store them in my basement cellar and then do the same thing all over again this time of the year and save a little bit of money. And by then the corms are a little bit bigger, which is kind of nice. And then you can actually divide some of those corms if they start to spread a little bit and get three corms out of one of them. So it's a good cost saving method. Okay, this has gotten me so excited for spring. It's only January and I'm like so many months away, but I'm really excited. And these are just gonna be such beautiful flowers. I'm having so much fun here in my greenhouse. But then as I was putting together these corms, it made me think of some of you who don't have a greenhouse, don't have a hoop, hoop house, you can totally plant them inside your house under some grow lights. Just make sure those temperatures are around 45 to 60 degrees. You don't want them to be too hot. I wouldn't recommend putting them in a south facing window. Sometimes they say you can put them in the east facing window. Just make sure those temperatures are a little bit more mild. And then once you start to see some growth, put them outside when those temperatures are above 28 degrees. Usually it's around four to six weeks before your last frost date is. So figure that out. Mine is May 15th, so I'm not really following the rules. Like I said, I want to try planting them in February to see if it's worth starting them early or if I, the ones I put out in March produce the same kind of blooms. So then next year, I'll just be a little bit more patient and wait a little bit longer. So I'm curious to see what happens with that. Let's just take a look at those Lysianthuses just because it is so exciting. I wasn't sure I was going to get any sprouts. These things are tiny. They're very intimidating. I do not know how I am going to keep these alive, but I'm just going to follow everything that I've learned and hope for the best. But And then my sweet peas have come out too, so I just want to show you 
my sweet peas germinating. It's so exciting. A little sneak peek. Okay, do you see them? They are tiny. I'm not sure I've grown a tinier seed. That is why they are intimidating. They're starting to sprout everywhere. So there's another one right here. I wasn't sure what to expect, but they really are sprouting everywhere. I know it's hard to tell because they're so small. Here's my sweet peas. It's so exciting. All right, guys, that is all I've got for you today. I hope you liked this video. Definitely hit the thumbs up if you found it a little bit helpful. I really do appreciate the positive feedback. Vernaculus corms really are so easy to grow. If you haven't grown them yet, definitely try growing them next year. And I'm just so ecstatic about my Lysi at this. I will definitely be babying that for the next month or two. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a great day and we'll talk to you later.